Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Friday Morning at the Fun House, alongside, as always, my good friend from up in Canada, Mr. Martin Popoff. Yes. Cold by you, Martin. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I checked, uh, you know, in courtesy to you, I checked what the, our Celsius is in Fahrenheit here. And it's it's basically zero Fahrenheit right here, which is minus 18 Celsius. So, yeah, it's real cold. Ooh. Yeah, I don't I don't know exactly. Well, no, you know what? I can tell you exactly what it is right now. I'm sitting here thinking, dude, you know, we do have modern technology these days, right? It is 22 degrees. OK, here in the Hudson Valley right now. And I think uh, but the wind chill is pretty is it's really windy and cold. And I think tomorrow's yeah. going to be worse. And then next week, it's going to go into like the upper 40s, low 50s. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, right. go figure. Yeah, that's, that's the winter that, that we're having this year. It changes every other day. So uh, I got yeah. a major haircut just in time. I was going to say, man, the cold just like cut, <laughs> took your hair right off. Right. Yeah, Martin? yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so today, Martin and I haven't done like a little rant episode in quite a while. So we've been talking about this one for a couple of weeks now. So uh, we're, we're titling this Two Grumpy Old Men at a Concert. And today we're going to bitch about what we hate about going to concerts these days. Not so much in the past, right? But in 2023, at our age, late 50s, what do we not like about going to shows? What we've done is we've kind of put three main categories together that we're going to kind of bitch about here. One has to do with the bands and the music at the shows. The other has to do with the venue. The other has to do with our fellow concert attendees. So we're going to kind of complain about everything today. So, yes, today is put on the complaint hat. That's OK. It'll be fun. So uh, Martin's going to kick us off with uh, our first category. And we've got lots of subtopics under each category. So everybody grab a beverage, sit back and relax and uh, bear with us here for the next hour. And uh, the music and the bands. Martin, kick us off. Yeah. OK. So in this department, I've got the odd prop for some of this stuff. But uh, but for this one, I have a, a little prop we like to call Deep Purple Made in Japan. Right. So uh, so this is this is all about. Yeah. Solos being too long, getting a bass solo, getting a drum solo, you know, painful guitar solos, getting getting your your 25 minute version of Dazed and Confused. When I go to a concert, I just want to hear that, hear the songs, not just the hits. I want to hear deep tracks, but I just want to hear the songs, four minutes, three minutes, just bang them out. I don't want any of those solos. I, you know, even as a hack drummer myself, I don't want to hear a drum solo, you know, as entertaining as, as someone like a Neil Peart tries to make it look, um, it's still, it's still a low moment for me. I want to have, I just want to have the songs kind of thing. Um, and then another big one for me, I've got a prop for this as well. Um, this is, this is almost my biggest one on, on our entire list. So, so here's my prop, some, some earplugs. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I definitely, this whole thing about why are concerts as loud as they are, you know, I, I feel like you never play your home stereo that loud. You never play even your car stereo that loud, right? Your car stereo, you kind of play, you know, usually I think most people might play their car stereo louder than their home stereo, but you never choose on your own or your in-ear buds or anything. You never choose on your own to play stuff as loud as you are forced to listen to it at a concert, right? Um, so, you know, I always have this analogy of it's like, it's like driving your car down the road with your foot on the brake and the gas at the same time, right? Because, the, you know, this is the brakes, right? The, the gas is that PA blaring at you. And, uh, and this is, and this is the brakes, right? And as soon as you put the brakes on, there's no treble, of course, right? So it's terrible sound. Um, you know, and, and the way, the way, or the time that you hear people complain about it the most is when they say things like, oh man, they brought a concert PA into this small, small club. And, and then these idiots go home and say, oh, my, my ears were ringing for three weeks after that. It's like, what, a, like leave, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Right. Uh, but having said that, you know, um, I do have this thing where I pull the earplugs out to listen to my favorite song or a part of it. And I put them back in, I pull them out, you know, I do that. Um, and then sometimes, you know, the, the odd thing is I've been to the odd concert. Usually maybe it's an outdoor thing and you're a little far away where you go, wow, it's not quite loud enough. You know, I, I kind of wouldn't mind it to be a little louder. Right. Um, so, so on the rare occasion that happens, but almost every time in a club uh, it seems like it's too loud. And then when they do it too loud, um, it means they're the audio is lousy. They they compromise so much on the audio and things come out muddy and you're losing top end, you're losing bottom end. You don't hear the guitars. You only hear the guitars. You don't hear the vocals. Um, the vocals are muddy. So 
it just always amazes me that, you know, it, it even amazes me why there even has to be a sound check. Uh, I, I just don't understand why they don't, why they don't have this all sorted out. I know there's slight variations in the venue, but um, I just don't understand how, um, you know, after 50 years of putting on concerts, they can't, they can't make them sound good in, in, in general. Right. It's, it's a crazy thing. So, um, so there's that, uh, you know, there's, there's the thing uh, with bands of, uh, you know, the fakeness, the, uh, the, the tapes, the keyboardist behind the stage, the guitarist behind the stage, that stuff is always really annoying. Uh, but I, I must admit that in most concert situations, I don't really know about that or hear that I'm fooled basically in a lot of cases. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, I, I only read about it on the internet kind of thing. So that, so that one, I don't remember too many specific examples of that being really annoying. Right. Um, medleys can't stand medleys don't want to hear don't want to hear you know i i you know i i was going to pull out my rainbow on stage too i i i hate you know, the messiness of having a medley and go is that song really on there or is it not because it's only the two minute version right and i don't want to hear that live either i want to go away knowing exactly what songs i heard and and don't have to put an asterisk by them right um what else yeah just songs being too long or or stretched out you know how about how about even just like band members being drunk or high kind of thing. Right. Um, I, I remember a, a replacement show in Vancouver where they were absolutely blotto and it was actually quite funny. Right. Um, and you know, honestly, in most cases, it probably even makes it more of a memorable experience. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I can't think of too many times where, where I, where I feel like um, I got a bad performance out of somebody because of that, but I've certainly seen a lot of those on the internet and I was glad I wasn't at those shows. Right. <laughs> You know, those those are the ones and and we all know the names we don't have to mention who they are but uh the, the same the same lead singer show up in all those videos it seems yes right? yes so, indeed uh, yeah anyways cool. that's uh that's the start of my rant i'll turn it over to you cool yeah i think one of the one of the few times where i've seen a band member like i, I remember zach wild shortly after dime passed away you know was killed uh i, I saw black label society and you know he showed up like almost two hours late I mean, this show, we were waiting and waiting and waiting, and you could tell he was beyond drunk for the performance. He still played and sang pretty good, but he was so distracted, and you could just tell that he was, like, really nervous to be playing wow. this big, high-profile New York City gig right after Dime was killed. Um, so, yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah, as far as, like, the, the whole too loud thing... Yeah, it's just gotten ridiculous. And then you're in a venue where like you go to one side and it kind of sounds OK. You go to another side and it's unbearable. And, you know, it's bad when you, you're wearing the ear because <clears throat> I wear earplugs all the time now because there's just certain places and certain bands where it's just it's just way too much. But I mean, I saw Kansas a few years ago at uh, the Beacon Theater in New York City. You didn't need earplugs. Perfect sound placement. You could hear every instrument. Why can't it be like that? Just loud enough, but you can hear everything, not this big assault. You know, you don't need that. Yeah, um, yeah the medleys, no interest in medleys. I, I want to hear the whole song. If you're going to play a snippet, play the whole freaking thing. Uh, because generally speaking, when bands play medleys, in my opinion, what they're doing is they're playing the the kind of the, the older classic stuff that the hardcore fan wants to hear and that they don't really want to play, but they figure, well, we'll give you four or five songs all in one and uh, we'll just do that. And, you know, the, the solos, that was like a seventies and early eighties thing, right? When you have a band that comes out now today and they do a bass solo and they do a drum solo, it's just like, Oh my God. Again, could we, could we just get like two or three of your songs? Never mind the solos. Nobody really cares. We know you can play. So it's kind of pointless. Yeah. All right, so uh, continuing on here. So how about those bands that uh, that give you a bad set list, right? They give you either they recycle the same songs, tour after tour, year after year, the greatest hits display, right? Like we don't hear those songs enough. Or they come out and they're like, we're going to play you the whole brand new album that nobody cares about or nobody's heard yet, right? Like Iron Maiden was notorious for that. I don't really mind when bands play like a majority of their new album. They are trying to sell the new album, but when you when the album either hasn't come out or it's or it's just came out and you're going to go and play an entire new album and start off the show that way, you, you're going to lose the audience like that. Um, how about short set lists? These, especially for some of these classic rock bands who have been around forever, you know, they come out and you pay good money and 70 minutes and they're done. 
again, they've cranked out their greatest hit set and they're like, all right, goodbye. And you're like, okay. I mean, I know I want to get home early because we are cranky old guys, but I, I mean, we could stay out till nine 30. Right. I mean, it's like, it's yeah. nine 10 and you're, you went on at eight, nine 10, you're done. I'm like, all right. So that, yeah. but you know, sometimes I celebrate that Martin, but other times I'm kind of like, Oh, I, come on. I could have given us another couple songs. Right. Yeah. Um, how about the band not interacting with the crowd at all? I, I saw a very weird dream theater show a few years ago when they did the whole astonishing album, which was kind of astonishingly bad. And James Labrie normally talks to the audience a bit in between songs. At least there's some kind of banter, man. They played that whole album. And he didn't say one word to the crowd at all. And I was like, that's it. That's all you get. I mean, bring us in a little bit. We're having a hard enough time with this as it is. And then you got the, the singer of a band who does too much talking in between. It's like, again, you spent 15 minutes talking during the show. You're only playing an hour and a half set. I would have rather had two or three more songs. So there's that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then there's, you know, the problem uh, with, uh, Actually, I think this is for the next section. Yeah, we're going to go into the venue next, but um, about standing and seating and all that kind of stuff. So we'll we'll cover that. In it looks like we have I have duplicates on my master sheet. So yeah, so we're going to uh, Martin. You want to comment on any of these at all? Yeah, actually, I something I forgot is that crowd participation thing, which I just cannot stand. It's like, man, my my voice is already wrecked, you know, because I'm supposed to cheer for you as well. So it's like, so you go, you go into your cheer, and you hope that doesn't wear out your voice. And then they ask you to say these inane things, like like bark back some, repeat some stupid thing that they said, and right? not once or twice, but two or three oh, times, and over forbid, and over again, right? God forbid you don't do it loud enough for them, and they're like, oh, that's yeah, not good yeah. enough. It's like, like what and. And, and and this is entertaining you on stage for some reason hearing the band you know the crowds say what you just said i mean i i don't get the whole thing right it's like and like i don't want to wear up my voice i got to go on pete's show tomorrow morning like come on you know this is ridiculous right and i'm already wearing it out doing the doing you know and i and i don't want to clap a whole bunch either because i don't want to hurt my hands because i got to type all day it's like steve howe with his uh you know don't shake my hands because i use these to play guitar it makes total sense right yeah, so yeah. so no i don't i don't want to clap mm. over all night over and over and over again or or you know god forbid even have clapping as part of the crowd participation thing too, <clears> right? i know so I don't and know. in, the, in so, the old days martin it was it, usually a band would have one song that would do the that would be the crowd participation thing i've seen some in recent years where they want you to do it three four times during the night it's like enough yeah. we're into the show trust us yeah. we are enjoying this you know we don't need to do this it's almost like you know they, they want you to prove that you really care and you're i know yeah and i've got so many of those going through my head like like one right off the top of my head is on and on on and on it's heaven and hell <laughs> like ronnie's please please just 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 sing just end it go into whatever the next part of the song is like get this heaven and hell over with right <laughs> you know so yeah but uh yeah i i agree bad, bad set list um that whole thing about the whole new album like i do want to hear deep tracks but i don't particularly want to hear the whole new album before i've ever heard it and you know and made in that situation where the songs are really long and they're not long for a good reason in a lot of case it's just kind of repetitive right angel and the gambler syndrome and all that right um short set list is a funny one because i i've often when i've been crabby about concerts said to people i wish every concert was 15 minutes long <laughs> so uh you know like literally i i you know i would rather i would rather see i mean this is stupid it's not going to happen but i i would rather i would rather go to a festival and watch 10 bands all play three songs each you know, kind of thing. And, but have their whole stage show and stuff, which is unrealistic, of course. Right. Um, because you can't you can't do changeovers that fast. But uh, but yeah. Um, and bands not interacting with the crowd that that throws a whole whole wrench into the thing or when or when there's a fight with someone in the crowd and then and then the lead singer looks kind of dicky now. You know, it's like, OK, so yeah. <laughs> so he's kind of looks like a crabby guy and we kind of don't like him anymore, you know, because he's obviously kind of a cranky dude and we're not on board. We're not cheering you on anymore kind of thing right now. Yeah, you know, that happened. I saw uh, Chris Allen. And I went to see the cult a couple months ago. And at one point during the show, like Ian Asbury called out uh, uh, two parents in the audience who had a really young baby right up in the front. Or not, I don't know if it was a baby, but it was a really young kid with them. And he like totally went off on them for having a young kid in the front with no earplugs. 
Oh yeah. And he was distracted for like two, three songs after that. He kept like yeah. jaw jawing at them and everything. And after a while, it's like, all right, enough, man. Play the music, right? Yeah, yeah, they're wrong. Maybe they shouldn't have this young kid with all this loud music right in the front like that. But it's like, you know, enough already. And it's wow, that that is incredible though, because that makes our other point too. That is that's almost like commendable in a way, right? It's like, and and those guys were really at fault. But uh, but yeah, I I um yeah, it's it's interesting when that happens because sometimes um it just comes off the the lead singer shows his prima donnaness when when he's doing one of these things or or like you can't cope with that or whatever with the whole you throw one more thing up on the stage and we're walking off right that kind of thing right it's like well obviously you don't really want to be here that badly because that bothers you right and that is and by the same token it's really cool when you see a band put up with crap being thrown at them or hitting them in the head, right? It's like, oh man, yeah, look at that. You're a trooper. You want to be here. You want to entertain us. You, you've you you've already compartmentalized that that one guy that threw that at you is not the other 18,000 people in this place, right? right. Um, you know, and, and, then, and then you're like cheering them on sort of thing. It's like, oh yeah, the show must go on, right? Kind of thing, right? We're so cheering that, them on until they say, that's it, we're done. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want my money back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yes, band talking. You know, so ba- this is a funny one band talking too much between songs. Now we're back to the previous point because I actually wouldn't mind them talking between songs if I ever once out of the hundreds of times I've heard that could understand a damn thing they were saying. Cause I, cause I, I, I can't even, I, I don't understand what they're saying ever when they do that. Right. No music going on, nothing happening. Just them with a microphone. I, I can't understand a word of it, right? It's, it's like the same thing, right? So, and then you go on the internet and you go, wow, that was really interesting what they said. I wish I could have heard it. I wish I could have heard it then, right? Because yeah, we got the yeah. earplugs in. We're like, yeah, we're not ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, so uh, so so my turn, and where I guess we're at the venue now, sort of thing. So too many bands on the bill. That's that's an interesting one where, um, you know, uh, this all has to do with. Uh, well, I, I think I'll, I'll I'll bring this one up right now. We're we're gonna we've got a, a department where we're complaining about other people, but talking about my own drinking schedule, right? So I've got some props here. So I've got my uh my favorite gin from Netherlands, Nolets or No No Lays. I guess it's because it's from Netherlands. I've got my shot glass. I don't know if it's possible to wear out a glass shot glass, but I'm I, I'm probably a candidate for having that happen. I've got my American Dog empty bottle, my uh my Trooper empty bottle. There you go. My rush beer empty can and my motorhead empty bottle. So uh so yeah, so this all is is part and parcel of uh and it's funny when I went to when I went to Finland to do that 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 metal conference and I did that who invented heavy metal thing there. Um it's it's funny talking to Finland uh, Finnish people who take their drinking seriously and they say That's we schedule drink. our drinking, right? And it's like it's like I, I want to drink at four or five in the afternoon on a, on an empty stomach. Once I eat, I don't, I don't want to even drink anymore. I have no desire whatsoever. Right. So, so this whole idea about going to a concert, it's, it's uh it's almost a non-drinking thing for me because nine, 10, 11 o'clock, I'm just not in the mood. Um, don't want to, I, I had dinner, you know, long time ago. Um, so, so that's a funny thing with me with this. And then of course there's a the whole, you know, drinking and driving thing. So you can't do that if you're driving to the thing, but, um, part and parcel of this, this grumpy old man rant about, you know, it, it always being too late for anything. Right. Uh, is, is the idea of when you're surprised with a whole bunch of support bands on the bill and you didn't get it straight when you, when you wanted to go to the venue and all of a sudden you're showing up at nine 30 and really the main reason you wanted to be there goes on at 12 15 right uh you know it's it's ridiculous right um so yeah that's the idea of bands going on too late and and again you know you're sitting you're standing there wondering the whole time it's like why why is this the schedule for this right and and their argument is oh we want to sell more booze we want to sell booze all night right but um you're thinking everybody in this place has got to work tomorrow morning right and like, what, how, how does this make sense for anything here? Right. Uh, it's just, it just doesn't. Uh, um, so yeah. Um, security, uh, over aggressive security. Um, that's, that's sometimes a problem. Uh, um, yeah. So the, so the no advertising of the sort support band thing, um, is, is interesting where it's really a surprise. You, you totally don't know. And they, and they put on, I've, I've been to these situations where, where they, they like literally put on 
two or three local bands just like that. You know, one of them might even be a cover band, right? Um, and they're just stacking the front of it. It's like, oh, we're, we're going to force all these people to have a have a local uh, Battle of the Bands contest before the band comes on. I've, I've seen that happen before. Um, concessions, lack of, too pricey, that sort of thing, right? Sometimes... Um, yeah, I mean the booze is really expensive, which is why people drink at home before they before they show up to the thing um, as well. And you're drinking warm beer half the time too, right? Um, and getting to the bar is super hard sometimes. But uh, yeah, I'll 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 leave it at that. That's sort of the venue thing. Yes, sight lines, I suppose, is is part of this as well. The standing, right? You know, it's like why why is when when did it become that standing was the uh, was the way to see a show, right? Like it's just, it just, it doesn't seem like the logical way, you know, sitting kind of seems like a better idea than standing no matter how old you are kind of thing. I don't know. Um, but yeah, sight lines is, is one all the time too, where, where you got to go way to the side or way to the front or back or whatever. And it's like, well, you know, what, uh, how, how does this work out? So anyways, I'll leave it at that. Turn it over to you. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the too many bands on the bill thing never used to bother me much, but now, you know, you get older and I don't want to stand for five hours at a concert. You know, I mean, it's one, you know, when you go to a theater and you have seats, it's one thing, you know, I can maybe do a little bit more. But even then, you know, you're comfortable. Martin, you had those couple beers, you had something to eat and you're like the first band, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the second band, all of a sudden you're like, yeah. you're looking at your watch and you're like, oh wow, we got a long way to go and I'm already yeah, getting yeah. tired and I'm sitting there, I'm already thinking, all right, well, if this show ends at 11 o'clock, that means five minute walk to the car. Maybe I hit a little traffic getting home. Maybe I'll get home by midnight. Oh man. I'm, then I'm already starting to think, well, I've already sat through three bands. Do I have an early exit strategy? I mean, this is the kind of shit that goes through my head, right? I'm like, I'm looking at every minute on the clock and I'm like, how many, all right, and then I go on setlist.fm and I start looking at the, the, how many songs are left and I'm like, oh, okay, I don't need to hear that last song. It's just, it's, it's crazy, like what I do at concerts now where I never oh, the, the early strategy thing just drives me crazy. You know, the early leaving strategy, right? It's like, do I do when w will the lead singer see me leave? You know, the guy I just interviewed uh, a little earlier today. Right. You know, it's like, uh, is the guitarist going to see me leave? Uh, are my buddies going to see me leave? Do I go over here where there are no buddies and I can get out that door? You're like caging all the exits. Right. Like when when can I do this? When is the best time? Right. Do you yep. do it during the clapping, during the song? Like, like, do you do you make a statement and go on the crappy song? You know, is that is that the way to do it? Right. And it's that, yeah, it's everybody in there is making that calculation about traffic, you know? Yeah. It's, it's always hard when you got a lot of buddies there. Right. And you're like, you know, you want to get out of there. And I'm like, all right, I can't say goodbye to anybody. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go run to the bathroom. And then like, <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> I hate saying goodbye to people at shows, you know, cause it's like, cause you know, if you wait till the end and then you start saying goodbye, you know, you're there another half hour. Right. Cause yeah. everybody's milling about. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. I got to, I got to get home and get to bed. It's just, it's absolutely crazy. And you're yelling goodbye to them in their ear and spitting yeah, on them. And then they spit back on you. And then, and then a small <laughs> conversation happens where you're both just yelling your, your face off at each other, saying a bunch of inanities that don't matter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy. But yeah. Um, yeah, there's nothing worse than you, you, you know, you, you go the advertising and that's a whole thing. You know, they advertise two bands. You're like, ah, great. You know, I'll show up at eight o'clock. Great. And then you show up at eight o'clock and you realize that there's still two other local bands to go. And you're like, oh man, this is ridiculous. So, uh, yeah. All right. So continuing on with the venue itself. So how about, uh, merch, lack of too much crappy merch, great merch so you can't make a decision it's way too pricey or maybe you can't find the merch in the venue right sometimes you have these venues that have all these multiple hallways and things and you don't know where the hell it is and or you you know you go out during a break between bands and there's like a million people at the merch you can't even get there to it there's not enough people working there you know that can be annoying uh bathroom facilities I've been to plenty of places where you have really clean nice bathrooms plenty of them well lit I've gone to some where you, you know, the place holds 2000 people and there's one men's room and one ladies room. And there's always a line. The place is a mess. There's people are slobs, right? There, there's paper towels all over the floor, people pissing on the floor, people's pubic hair on the urinals. So someone takes a dump in the, in the toilet and doesn't flush. I mean, you know, clogs it up. I mean, it's just, I've seen all sorts of disgusting things in my time going to shows. Crazy. Um, 
parking. Uh, this is a big pet peeve of mine. One of the one of the many reasons why I don't like going to arena shows anymore. Uh, you know, you got to drive far enough to get to the arena. You get there, and they want to charge you forty, fifty dollars, or more just to park for the event. And sometimes you have to pay that, and then you got to walk fifteen minutes, like a half a mile. It's like what? I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. Uh, there's ticket prices. I mean, we talked about ticket prices before. Uh, big shows, expensive. You got to deal with Ticketmaster and all that kind of nonsense. You got the scalpers and it's just, it's a mess. You don't know whether you're buying it from the actual Ticketmaster or you're buying a third party from someone else. Uh, we talked about bad or little advertising for a show. I've, I've, I've noticed of late, especially since COVID, you know, when shows are just starting to come back online a bit, uh, you hear about shows that happen after they happen because nobody wants to spend the money on advertising. And you know, unless you like sign up, like you're on an email list for a venue or a band, you're not going to hear about any of these shows. You're not going to hear about them on radio. You don't read them in the newspaper. If you read newspaper, if you listen to radio. So it's hard to kind of hear about what's going on unless you really pay close attention. Um, uh, bar, the bar. OK, uh, you know, in the instance that I, I don't really drink at shows much anymore, I usually will have a couple of beers beforehand with dinner and then that's it. Uh, but, you know, at, at a rare event where maybe I don't drive to and I go with a, a buddy. Right. And I'm like, I can have a couple of beers. You know, you got one bartender, a million people trying to get at the bar. It's expensive. They don't have a good selection. Uh, you know, it's like, what do you got? Bud Light, Coors and Heineken. And I'm like. Uh, none of the above do you have, you have nothing else right No. so uh and then uh last but not least uh outdoor venues is always an experience so you have you're out in the sun if it's a daytime you know early evening thing not enough shade parking lots always far away and then generally speaking there's this thing called porta potties which can be an experience on its own uh, i i recall the last time I went to Bethel Woods, which was the old Woodstock site here, and uh, I was, I think it was ZZ Top, actually. And I was, and the night before the ZZ Top show was the Black Crows, which was really well attended. So apparently they did not clean out the porta potties the night before. So I was hanging out in the parking lot with Ryan Scow. We had a couple of beers, something to eat. And I'm like, I'm going to go run to the porta potties before we go inside. Martin, I could smell the stench a hundred yards away. And it wasn't much better when I got inside one of those things. I mean, you literally opened that door and I was like, oh, the, one of the worst things I've ever smelled in my life. So yeah, you have that uh, wonderfulness, right? If you can't wait to get inside to the real bathrooms, you have to deal with porta potties. So I'll stop there. I don't know if you want to comment on any of that. Yeah, I've, I've got a prompt for the outdoor venue thing. So, uh, and this, this makes another point that I'm going to make too, but uh Rolling Stones Still Life. Um, you know, this is not the Stones tour I saw, but I think you and I both didn't didn't you go to Steel Wheels? Yes. Yeah, so so did I. And and that was a massive outdoor venue. So that's that's the thing about the sound being so far away and bouncing off and them being little tiny guys in the in the distance. But yeah, sun, sunburn, you know, I I I make sure I've got sunscreen on, but I just I, I almost like feel pain for all these these people who didn't uh didn't even think about that right and they don't bother you they don't care hours and hours blasting sun on them right and they're all but you know the other point i wanted to make about this is is the bad set list thing i i, I took a look at this so this has 10 songs on it four of them are covers you're the rolling stones you know you put out a single live album and you got four covers on it you know i i know you love music and you're musicologist but put put your own damn songs on the record right? i know <laughs> ridiculous right um it's one thing if you want to play them live but for the album man come on give yeah, us your yeah rules. yeah and uh you know and and talk about uh you know venues and and uh and concessions that outdoor situation i mean i've never run into this or had a problem with this but think about those times that you hear about them not having any water for anybody right so everybody's just getting dehydrated right and the concessions selling out you know outdoor venues have a lot of problems with the concessions right yeah, yeah. super long beer lines and, and all that right so, uh, yeah. Um, so let's see what else. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll go on with mine. So, so complaints about fellow attendees, um, you know, I definitely I've, I've had everything happen. I, I haven't been thrown up on yet, but I've definitely had, you know, beer spilled on me close up. 
beer spilled on me from the balcony. Um, you know, that, that would just happen at the clutch show a, a little, little while ago. Right. Um, so yeah, you got beer all over you. Right. And, or, or there's, or there's the guy standing next to you who wants to prove his fandom by singing every line, you know, getting every lyric, right. So he's like singing the whole song for you. Oh, right he's doing that. He's yeah, like, yeah. Leaving yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People bang in India, all the politics of the tall people and the short people and standing in front and moving and 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 when you know how how far are you allowed to uh to we you know you know weed your way into the crowd uh, and at what point do you become like you're now in somebody else's space and and when are you not in somebody else's space but then there's the guy behind you that's just barreling through right just banging into you and and, and going through and stuff yeah knocking your beer over or whatever you know getting an elbow in the head or whatever so um the pit starting right next to you and you're, you're, you're kind of, you're, you know, you don't know if you're going in, but you're at least the guy pushing everybody back sort of thing. Right. So, so it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to wilt and go all the way away from here, but I'm not going to get right in it either. Right? No, sort no. Of thing, right? so, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. And um, yeah, the, the, um, the texting and the talking uh, all, all next to you and, you know, everybody taking, taking shots of the, the show with the phone sort of thing. I mean, I, I, I pull it out sometimes. I want to get some pictures. I don't want to get any video. There's no use for me for any video. Right. So yeah. there's no use for really anybody for any video. You just go on YouTube. You'll see better versions of it. Right. So never understood how many, how that. How many of those people who had videoed the entire show on their phone are actually going to go and watch that later on? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Experience it. In the moment, never mind yeah. about recording. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, someone's going to sure. put it up on YouTube, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, you know, and frankly, you know, to, to continue the rant about being a grumpy old man with any of this stuff, I mean, the, the overriding thing for me is that um, you almost get, you get a better view and better sound and better control over the thing by just watching the band on this tour on YouTube rather than going to it. You know, there's, there's that too. It's like, if you have an academic reason, like, you know, my job all day is, is writing these books on this stuff. I'm just like a full-time fan. Like it's rare, but that's what I am. Right. So, so I have an academic reason for having and knowing this stuff, but it's amazing now with YouTube that, that I can be the expert on Led Zeppelin live in the seventies simply just by having that more than a guy who's who's bragging every time he gets a chance that I saw Led Zeppelin in the seventies. Right. Yeah. It's like, well, you know what, we, we can actually all get this and get even way more than your two or three shows because there's 50 shows. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and if, and if anybody of us wanted to, we can go through all that material and, and really probably you could argue that I've experienced this way more than, just having seen them live once at least right you know it's 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 an argument but i mean it's obviously it'd be great i didn't see zeppelin live um it would be great to uh to be able to say that um but uh but the fact of the matter is yeah it's it's like we can we can get all this sorted out and see a lot more and see a variety of shows and get a, get a better view than we had at the show and get better sound in a lot of cases by just uh, going to youtube and how many people don't go to shows because of that reason? They just have to sit home. I don't have to pay for it. It's right there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Spotify and physical too. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think uh, that's it. Uh, what, <clears throat> any, anything to add? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think granted again, we're in our late fifties. It's we act a little differently than we did. 20 30 years ago i used to be one of those guys that went to a show and got got you know i had a bit to drink right I, but i i don't remember ever being a complete asshole uh and i think it's funny when you see people our age at shows who still do that and they get all liquored up and they're just complete jerks and like they're they're not even paying attention to the bands at this point and they're just like ah and you know and then it, it god forbid you sit next to them right because they got to get up to pee every two seconds and then they got to get another beer and then they're spilling the beer on their way back and it's just like really why don't you just sit at the bar all night right you don't need to be here bugging me all night uh you know you got the um and then some of them insist on bringing their wives or their kids and they're not totally not into the show. And you can tell they're on their phone all night, you know, they're texting each other. It's like, you know, stay home. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that, that just drives me crazy. The people who insist, you know, if these shows aren't loud enough, 
I, I, I went to see uh, Martin Barr from Jethro Tull early, early last year. And Eric Porter and I were sitting next to this couple who were probably older than us, maybe in their 60s. And you could tell the wife was had no interest in being there. What did she do? She talked to her husband the entire show. I could hear her, everything she said, with headphones on and the band playing really loud. Shut the fuck up. Go home. What are you doing here? It's like, is it that? I mean, uh, just drove me nuts. I was just like, I kept glaring at them. I was like, will you stop? It's like, please. It just drove me crazy. And then here, I think my number one pet peeve of, of late, when you go to an arena show, obviously the nosebleed seats are a lot cheaper than the floor seats, right? So then you have these people and the floor seats, generally people stand on the floor. All right. It's sometimes it's general admission. Sometimes maybe they have seats. Everybody stands down there. You do whatever the hell you want. The people, the cheap people who go and buy the nosebleed seats. And then as soon as the band comes on, they stand up and they're dancing and they're singing and they're moving around right in front of me. And then when you when you tell them that you can't see, they're like, well, I bought a ticket just like everybody else. I can do what I want. And I'm like, really now? And you just want to like push them and just <laughs> That drives me crazy. If, if all you wanted to do is stand and dance and move around, buy a seat on the floor because that's what everybody does down there. That, that drives me absolutely nuts. Um, what else we got here? Here's another one. You go to a concert, it's a very popular band is playing. You kind of know what they're going to play, right? Because they play a lot of, the, the, you know, whatever. And the people who show up in the parking lot to tailgate, and what are they doing? They're playing all the songs in their car <laughs> that the band is going to play in an hour. Why? You're going to hear it. Why don't you listen to something else? Um, yeah. yeah, that drives me absolutely nuts. And uh, what else here? The people who go to a concert just to hear one or two songs. I've, I've, I've complained about this ad nauseum here on the channel over the years. Uh, I've told the story a million times of going to see Blue Oyster Cult here in New York time and time again, packed house, older crowd. Blue Oyster Cult does a really good job of playing deep cuts and rare stuff and the hits you wanna hear, but you get these people that show up and they sit there like they're bored through the entire concert, maybe they're spending a lot of time in the bathroom at the bar and they just sit there, they're talking to their friends or significant others, right? And they're just looking completely uninterested, not even clapping. And then, oh, here comes Don't Fear the Reaper. They get up, they go berserk, they run down to the stage, front of the stage, they have their go, oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you spent all this money, you came all this way just to get excited about one song. You could have stayed home and listened to it on your stereo or on the radio and played your greatest hit set and had just as much fun. I, I don't understand that at all. People, if they just want to hear those one or two songs and you can name any like classic rock band, I've seen it. Uh, it, it just perplexes me that people just don't, uh, either they don't know any of the material other than the radio songs, they don't care to, I don't know what it is, but I just find it odd that you would do all, go to all this trouble just to get excited over one or two songs it doesn't make any any sense to me whatsoever. So. Yeah. You know, a funny thing about that also is is I, I think of the 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 times that um I was waiting to hear a certain song or whatever, and I was disappointed because it was played too fast or too slow or or too loose. Um or, you know, the sound wasn't good enough to like really, really translate. I mean, I guess this really doesn't have to do with a song per se, but um, that is that is a thing that is a little odd. Sometimes the live versions disappoint for for various reasons, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I saw Yes at Madison Square Garden uh, once. It was, I think, at the 90s, and they played like a, uh, uh, a reggae version of... Um, uh oh god their big song from fragile i'm drawing a complete blank um roundabout they played like a reggae version of roundabout and i'm sitting there thinking granted I i'm at the point where i don't need to hear roundabout again i've heard it a million times but i definitely don't want to hear a reggae version of it and i was like what is this all about but yeah. you know people were like totally digging it because it's roundabout they don't care but i mean i'm sitting there thinking yeah yes and reggae no thanks no yeah. thanks 
or they play a too heavy version of a song, or there's the the acoustic version of the song, which oh. brings up the acoustic set, the sitting on oh, stools and yeah. doing the acoustic set. Don't want to see the acoustic set. No, no, Martin, I hate acoustic sets. I just <laughs> yeah. have no interest in them. You know, when Jamie Lazlo and I did the Pat Benatar show a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was telling him about the one and only time I saw Pat Benatar. Uh, I thought the band, they were really good, but then like midway through the set, her and Neil just went out there and did an acoustic set that lasted almost the entire rest of the set. And I was like, what? I'm like, oh, God, you know, my, my first time seeing her and them. And I'm like, and that's what you're going to give me? I was like, and I was very disappointed. I mean, the, when they had the full band out there, it was great. But like, they literally played like six, seven acoustic songs. And I'm like, oh, really? Oh. This, to me, there's nothing more of a buzzkill than that. That yeah. don't want to see it at all. Because, you know, when you're at a show, you, you also... Um there's not enough really going on to hold your interest in most cases. And that's why you need the four or five different people up there doing what they do. So, so you can look, look around at all of them. Right. And uh, you know, and, and it's, it, it does help to have a good stage show in most cases too, because quite often when, when a band really doesn't have much of a show, I mean, you are going to get bored quicker, right? You know, nothing new is coming out. That's it. You see, you've seen the backdrop, you've seen the light show. Nothing else is going to happen. So, so that's, you know, all these things go into your calculation of that, of that early exit without saying goodbye to anybody. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it's, that's totally true. Um, and, you know, also too, <clears throat> how about like, there are, there are certain audiences for certain bands. And I, 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 I kind of just explain what I'm talking about here. So like, if you, if you go to a dream theater concert, right, the crowd is really into it, but they're into it in a different way. They're not singing along. They're not dancing around. They're not, you know, they're like meticulously watching every member in that band doing their little thing. And, you know, all the, and, and it's like, they're into it, but in a different way. Whereas you go to like, maybe let's say, uh, you know, like a, a death metal show, right? People are just, they're moshing they're, they're everybody's raging about, or you go to like a classic rock show, everybody's like up and they're singing and they're totally getting into it. So I think like there's different audiences that, that, react and enjoy shows differently based on what's important to them or you know i guess based on the style of music right you know prog prog bands are a perfect example you go to a prog show everybody sits down they're very polite they're watching and listening to everything very very closely they're not interested in dancing they're not interested in singing it's more of like a musical thing where i think some of the classic rock stuff and maybe you know pop bands it's more of like a party Right. Whereas like an extreme metal thing, that's it's like the intensity. Right. There's a there's a there's a certain level of intensity that has to happen during a show. So I think like people's expectations of how audiences should act at concerts vary from genre to genre. I, I got another one. The intermission. Oh, man, I hate intermissions. Oh, at anything. Right. It's like, oh, I, I can't believe this concert's going to come to a dead halt for 20 minutes. For 20 minutes. Come yeah. back. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Right. Just get the thing over with. Right. Just, yeah. just keep it going when nobody needs an intermission. Right. Because with intermission, then we start really looking at the clock and we're the watch and we're like, yeah. OK, oh, yeah. crap. I didn't I didn't anticipate a 20 minute intermission. That yeah. means I may yeah. not leave till. 10 20 that means 10 minute walk to the car and i if i have to say goodbye to anybody oh no i'm gonna martin i'm gonna get home at midnight yeah, and i gotta yeah. have a meeting at eight o'clock in the morning oh yeah it's yeah, yeah. and That's and cool. a nice thing that happened that that we that we appreciate is the whole king crimson we're going on at eight sharp right kind of thing right like yeah. that's amazing. Those, those concerts, I love those sorts of things, right? Where, where you know, it's going to start at a certain time. It's going to be over by 10 or 1030 or something like that, right? Well, that brings up the whole point that we need opening bands anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the opening act is good for the up and coming bands who need the exposure, but I agree with you 100%. Like King Crimson, uh, when I saw Wishbone Ash a year, year and a half ago, it was just them. They played an hour and a half, uh, you know, out of there real quick. And I, I like the kind of the one band thing, because that's really who you're paying the money to go see anyway. Yeah. And, you know, granted, you get the the occasional like, you know, Queensryche opening up for Judas Priest on this last long. I mean, that was great because they complimented each other and Queensryche comes out that they're well known and they kind of get the crowd fired up. And that, I think, was always the the reason for having the warm up bands is to, to get everybody psyched and leading up to the to the headliner but i don't know if it's really necessary anymore especially for us old grumpy old men who just want to go see that headliner and we you know we want to spend our hour hour and a half there and then go yeah. bye-bye right 
the funny thing though is for us grumpy old men though too it's it's like some of our greatest concert memories are the opening bands we got to see right and then they got big yes. later and all that kind of stuff yes. like some yeah. of our best stories are are having seen those opening bands right yeah i mean i i, I saw some great opening bands all throughout the 80s especially yeah. um yeah, yeah i just think it's i think they don't to me the choice of opening band in most cases now is like it's an afterthought because to me there's nothing more telling of we just don't give a shit than a band to say we'll just grab a local band in every city that we play in yeah like really you can't just take a band out and, t- and tour with them like in the old days because that's what was fun you know you go you're going to go see iron man it's like oh fast way is opening up right oh fast way is the up and coming new band with you know former guy from motorhead and i mean that's that's cool that's a great package tour and you don't see enough of that anymore that brings up another one right the when when you when you literally bring up an, a local band when when the band becomes your band for the night like like when paul diano plays with some local guys or or warren zevon went on tour love warren zevon saw him once that was amazing but he had he had um as his band a vancouver band i think they're from vancouver called the odds they were amazing um but you know i would have rather have seen some storied old you know uh avocado mafia you know J- jackson brown guitarist and, and you know guys from california up there with him i want to see some other legends with you right um not and then the worst thing that happened was the odds actually were the support band too so that so they were the warm-up act and then warren zevon act you know great we're gonna see warren zevon here's all the same four guys again with him right I mean, we just saw you poor guys. Right. Yeah. And you're, and you're not from California. You're from Canada. Right. <laughs> um, and then who else has done? I mean, I, I, who else is, there's people that are legendary for that. I think Chuck Berry did that uh, somewhat. Right. He'd go around and, you know, here's the local guys. And then you'd tune up with them and you'd play. It's like, yeah, Oh, like, yeah. I know these guys. Like, you know, this is not, this is not that as special as if Chuck Berry brought his own band, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Right. So yeah, that's, that's the worst too. So. Yeah. Do you have a uh, a preferred type of venue you like you would like to go to nowadays? Not like not a particular venue, but like do you like arena shows? Do you like clubs? Do you prefer like a like a little theater? You know? Yeah, pre- predictable old man answer: a, a theater, and the nicer the better, right? Like a really good theater where everybody's like knows the code is to sit, yeah. right? And and if you don't know the code is to sit, the ushers going to come by and tell you to sit yes right and if you they're know, not doing their job cool. you're going to be like oh excuse me that, that can you go tell them down front yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah so and you know that's always that's always the best sound it's the best sight lines you're not that far away um yeah it, everything's perfect for that um you know and then and then you know often it's to do with convenience you're into convenience you're into a place where you know the venue you know the promoter and stuff you know and so many concerts i had to go to were in con- con- conjunction with um, and it's the other thing that just drove me crazy. It's like, it's like sometimes I would have to interview a band, but I'd have to go far away to the venue to interview them at four in the afternoon and then go home and then come far away back to see them again later on sort of yeah. thing. So, and then sometimes you're stressed out the entire time and it can't be a drinking situation and all that stuff because they tell you, oh yeah, you're going to interview the band after the show. Which is great. So after the show, so after whatever they do, they do after the show and the shower and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden it's one in the morning and, and I'm supposed to be lucid enough uh, and not stressed out enough to, to like literally interview this guy. I'm, I'm, we're both tired, right? Um, yeah. Both don't want to be there. So yeah, those I just started turning down eventually. Yeah, I, I did one or two of those, and I'm like, never again. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta, you know, because most of the time that was always happening in New York City. I live, you know, an hour and a half north, so I gotta get home. I can't get home at five o'clock in the morning, guys. So it either happens beforehand or I don't do it. That's it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, and, and I agree I, with it. The uh, and, I, I like the um, the more intimate settings of of like a nice little thousand fifteen hundred seat theater yeah I much prefer that and what i always push for there is, is trying to have them i want to interview them just before sound check or just after sound check sort of thing and bands have napping schedules too you got to watch yeah. when they're going to be napping oh, yeah. right um but but those are the best like when you can when you can catch them when you can go down to the show once 
right? Go down, get your stuff done before, you know, get some stuff signed and interview them and get all that done. And it's like, cool. I'm, I, you know, all the hard stuff's over with. Now I just get to watch a show. That's, that's a good time to drink too, because you miss dinner. So, so dinner didn't come in there anywhere. So you're, Hey, okay. I can drink now too. Plus I, plus I had this awesome, you know, meet, meet and greet with these guys and in interview and stuff. But yeah, I remember once uh, Aaron small and me from the magazine, I probably mentioned this before, but drinking beers on the bus with Zach at two in the afternoon. It's like, this ain't going to work for me, but I'm doing it. And I don't know how this is going to work for you because you got a concert to do later. So oh, he don't like, care. He, back in the old days, that's what he Yeah, cares. You're going to drink a bunch of beers and then you're going to nap and then you're going to wake up and you're going to have that fuzzy, nappy drinking beers hangover thing just in time for the show. Nice. The show, yes. Right. But then, you know, of course, there's probably some pounding of some beers that, that get rid, rid of that, you know, and, and he he's probably had it all worked out properly, too. Right. It's like when Richie Blackmore would say, uh, you know, he used to say in interviews, I, I have exactly my three and a half beers and this is where I time them to get me through the show. That's exactly what you should do. Right. You yeah. should you just have you got this perfect thing to get the right buzz at the right time as a performer up there on stage and, and not yeah. overdo it. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, you got to know your body and know where the limits are and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I will say uh, to touch on the venue thing one last time. Uh, the last time I saw the Rolling Stones, which was probably right before COVID, that last big go around that they did. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw them at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey where the Giants play. And that was my last big stadium show. I'm there. I'm not going to any. I don't care who was playing. I'm not doing it. I, I, I've, I've realized that I do not enjoy these big, huge stadium shows anymore. A, you're a million miles away. B, I'm stone cold sober and I just don't enjoy it. And C, the majority of the people that go to shows like that just think it's a big party and act like assholes. And I don't have any tolerance for people like that anymore. I mean, I literally that entire day, I was just, I was pissed off about everything and I just didn't enjoy it. And I was like, you know what? That's it. Done. Yeah, yeah. Give me a smaller place where I can sit comfortably. Yeah. People don't act like idiots. And I know I can get home in you know an hour and don't have to worry about parking and all that kind of nonsense. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I got one last one too. Sorry. Man. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing about tickets and ticket prices, it's not even the prices for me. It's like the complication and the jumping through hoops. And you got to You got to be like, like a tech tech wizard to figure out how to buy Dude. it these yeah. days right it's like i get i get anxiety at just trying to figure out how to buy a ticket and yeah. i just say to heck with it unless somebody's forcing me to go to this show and wants to go i'll say go get the tickets then because i I don't want to have anything to do with that. i'm going to hand you 50 bucks you know when i see in front of the venue that's how we're going to do this right yeah, um, otherwise you, you, yeah too complicated it's way too complicated you can't tell who you're buying them from anymore you really don't know. It's like, you see, like here, you use Ticketmaster, right? Ticket, yeah. I, think it, yeah. I mean, you go to Ticketmaster, you don't know whether you're actually buying it from Ticketmaster. You're buying it from a, a, someone who bought a ticket and is reselling it. And they give you all these price variations and there's all these hidden fees. And it's just like, and you know, now you can't even get the ticket printed out, right? You have to, it's electronic. It's like, well, what if I show up at the, at the, at the you know, the venue and my phone craps out? I can't get in then, right? My battery dies. It's like, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. And then you got nothing to show for it afterwards. I mean, I'm someone who's collected uh, ticket stubs my entire life. And now I can't do that anymore, right? It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. All right. <sighs> anyway, all right. There, there you have it, everybody. Uh, two grumpy old men going to concerts. What we don't like about it. Is there anything we do like about concerts, Martin? I, I do like the vibe. I do like going because I like the performances. I think that's what it comes down to. I like seeing my favorite bands playing my favorite, you know, songs that I like. I, I still get a, a lot of enjoyment out of it, but it's just, it's getting there. It's the people, it's everything else. Kind yeah. Of sucks, but yeah, I mean, you do have that in-person experience. Um, yeah. It's, it's a story you can tell forever kind of thing. You know, the surprise of the great backup band you know, and maybe not even my situation in terms of like, you know, I've sometimes interviewed, but a lot of people do get to meet their heroes at these things. There's the meet and greet things. Uh, and, and, you know, in the old days, you know, not very long ago, it was, 
it was free and and they were glad to come see you and sign whatever or whatever that's obviously changing as well but yeah. uh but yeah so there's there's a lot of great things about them too and and you know and and you think of just those magic moments of the perfect song or even part of a song that you remember for the rest of your life that that they did right it's usually it's usually you don't have to come away from the show saying oh i loved all all uh, you know hour 40 of it right it's like oh my god this one time that they went into this part of this and everything was great and he flashed a smile and he like like you know he was like talking to the crowd and everything was perfect and the sound was amazing and i was right up close and and you remember that 20 seconds for the rest of your life yeah yeah or maybe they played two of your favorite tracks off the brand new album you're excited never seen the you know i may never see those live again so yeah there's there's lots of little nuances and things that make them so special i mean we're we're kind of bitching about a lot of other stuff today but uh for the most part going to shows if you enjoy going to concerts you're always going to enjoy going to concerts right there but there's always going to be things you love about them and things you don't love about them so but uh as we pointed out today, as you get older, some of the other things start to bug you just a little bit more, just a little bit. So anyway, uh, so uh, that's that's a wrap for today. So if any of you have any other crazy things that bother you about concerts or things you really love about going to concerts, put them down in the comments below. And uh, before we tell you about next week's show, Martin's going to give you an update on things going on with uh, books in stock and contrarians and all that good stuff. Yeah, so uh, so my latest episode of the audio podcast, History and Five Songs, we did a third album, New Band, and last week it was second album, New Band, where a band changes the genre completely after before their second album or third album. We got the Contrarians YouTube show and uh, all my books, martinpopoff.com. Thank you for the review of the Pink Floyd, by the way, caused a bunch of sales. Um, so that was very cool. So yeah, the Pink Floyd dark side of the moon 50 years kind of a weird title was my idea it was just kind of a simple title on the thing but it's a big coffee table book about pink floyd and uh martinpopoff.com for uh for all that stuff cool cool yeah it's a it's a pretty enjoyable pink floyd book i, I like that i like the way it's laid out i like that format it works really well and a lot of really, really cool factoids about the production and all that i mean that must have been a lot of a lot of research on your part but very well done i love books that are just a big set of liner notes that's all that thing is right yeah that 100 percent. yeah yeah and for for the geeks and all of us who who like that sort of thing that's that's a fascinating read you know that that's less about the the, the stories and more about this is the, the nuts and bolts of what made this album and that's you know it's what it's all about it's such a landmark album it's like you know let's get geeky with it right so all right so uh coming up next week everybody we've got uh something i've been wanting to do for a, quite a while we get a lot a lot of people love when we talk about uh rock and review rock autobiographies and, and biographies so you know i've done various shows over the years where i've talked about a lot of ones that i've read but i don't think i've ever actually given some thought to like maybe my 10 favorites, uh, 10 favorite rock bio autobiographies that I've ever read. So I asked Martin if he'd be interested in, you know, as a guy who writes books and does this for a living, uh, do you have ones that you really like? So we've decided to do that show next week. We're actually doing it today, but I won't be around next week. So we're recording it today to air next week. And uh, we're each going to talk about some our our 10 favorite uh, rock bios, right? So that's coming up next week for all you book lovers. Uh, hopefully you get to hear about some that you haven't read yet that you might want to go check out. So uh, that's coming up uh, next week. So stay tuned for that. We got, so what do we got this week? And we got um, ranking the albums on Sunday of Caius for album discography. I'll be doing that solo on Sunday. And then next week we've got, uh, what is next week? Next week is in the prog seat on Tuesday and the UK connection on Saturday. And of course, each and every day you'll get uh, new episodes of albums that are 40 years old in 2023 i'll be pre-recording those before i leave for my business trip so fear not everybody you'll have plenty of content during the week while i'm away and uh, we'll see you next friday here on the fun house business on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn time for martin popo fine pete pardo enjoy your weekend everybody we'll see you here next friday take care bye-bye <laughs>